that we're alone, let me cut to the heart of the matter. You are skilled in manipulating the elements, and not just a single element, but multiple. Is that correct? Paimon knew that you were hinting at something from the moment we met! You've known all along! That's right. If the other contenders were to catch wind of your elemental abilities, let's just say it would cause some unwanted misunderstandings. If I'm not mistaken, you share these considerations, given your reluctance to use elemental skills even in the heat of a match. <laughs> when I talk about that which I see or hear in you, this is not poetic symbolism at play. I mean these things in the truest sense possible. Since a young age, I have been attuned to the tidings of nature. I hear the breath of the wind and the whispers of the leaves. It is things of this nature that I also hear from within you. Nothing more. As crazy as all that sounds, somehow Paimon still believes you. My humble abilities are negligible compared to your incredible feats. To think a human could wield the elements without a vision, and not to mention your incredibly complex scent, like that of some mysterious being. Could you perchance enlighten me as to how you managed to obtain your combined elemental abilities? Hmm. Extraordinary. So then, might I be so bold as to inquire how exactly it is that you learned to channel elemental energy and even wield it in combat? Aw, it's nothing really. Paimon just told her whatever came to mind. It's been a long journey, and many things have happened along the way. Somehow, she just naturally learned to use the elements to it all. Honestly, even Paimon doesn't understand how it all works. Perhaps such unfathomable things are the essence of the gods and the visions they grant. However, I still wish to have the honor of seeing how you wield the elements. Perhaps it may yet reveal something to me. Of course, I too shall share with you all that I've learned. That will make it a fair exchange. Now then, let's test your skills, shall we? Huh. You control the elements without a vision. That means... Oh, pay no attention to me. I was just talking to myself. <clears throat> I will be sure to observe your battle intently. Your skills in battle are truly beyond reproach. Even with your opponent's speed, he shouldn't be able to overwhelm you. Your opponent is skilled at controlling his breathing and maintaining balance, which enables him to execute moves that many would find impossible. He relies entirely on the element of surprise to defeat his opponents. In other words, as long as you remain mindful of his ability to detect weak points, then his attacks should pose no threat to you. Please, save your thanks. If anything, I should be thanking you for the opportunity to witness your command of the elements that defies all known principles. The world is a truly mysterious place, it seems, and one will always encounter that which is still unknown. You seem kind of obsessed with visions, but don't you already have your own? Why are you so intent on exploring the connection between visions and the elements? I desire to know what meaning visions have to the gods, and what influences the gods' decision to grant humans these visions. 
My apologies. You must be completely in the dark regarding such matters. For allowing me the honor of witnessing your mystical ways, I am willing to answer any questions you may have regarding Inazuma. So that's what you're curious about? <laughs> then allow me to tell you more. As you well know, a vision hunt decree is currently underway in Inazuma. Visions are a gift bestowed by the divine. People that have accepted this gift are now having their visions confiscated inexplicably. Sometimes in circumstances that leave their original recipients dead. In the outset, supposing each of the seven archons had their criteria for granting visions to living beings, then does the current Electro Archon now doubt these criteria? Or even the act in and of itself? Not to mention, with no new Electrovisions having been granted for such a long time, it would seem that we can infer something of the Raiden Shogun's feelings on the matter. She sounds less like an Archon and more like a tyrant. As far as I know, she is an Archon that pursues eternity. She will relentlessly carry out her will with no regard to what others may think or feel. Liyue's contracts are meant to benefit all who reside within Liyue. But what does Inazuma's pursuit of eternity bring to its people? It goes without saying that the people locked within Inazuma do not fare well these days. Sounds a lot like something the god you encountered in the beginning would do. Oh? Have you encountered the Electro Archon before? With time... We will change, but the Shogun will remain the same. If you wish to find her, she will forever be there. There will come a day when I too shall wish to understand the answers to eternity from her. Ah, the time for your match is approaching. Oh, right! We got so distracted talking about Inazuma that Paimon forgot all about the tournament! If you have no other matters to attend to, then we can return together. Very well, let's go. I wish to see who will obtain the vision. <sighs> Why isn't he here yet? Never mind. We can start by making your entrance first. Everyone, listen up! Your attention, please! We've reached the climax of the Crux Clash! This is the final match! We've seen many exciting battles today, and now, at long last, the two finalists have emerged! Now, I'd like to introduce our first combatant. Though few have seen her, her reputation knows no bounds. She strikes fear into the heart of Osile, and the mere mention of her name causes even Fatui Harbingers to turn pale in the face! Introducing Liyue's Traveling Hero! Wow! <sighs> I've been waiting for this moment! I'm sure everyone witnessed her thrilling match in the semifinals. But today's final round will surely take things up a notch. As for our other combatant... Uh, he still hasn't arrived. Oh, come on, what could be taking him so long? You can't just forfeit for not showing up like in previous rounds. <laughs> this is the finals. Apologies, everyone just sit tight. We've got no other choice. If he doesn't show up, we'll just have to postpone the match. Wait a moment. Something doesn't seem right about this. Captain Beto, perhaps we should check on the prize. Traveler, come with us. Let me see. It's gone, all right. The vision is missing. Huh? Did somebody steal it? Who would dare do such a thing in broad daylight? We don't know when it was taken exactly. <laughs> I never thought that someone here would have the guts to cross Captain Beto. No need to worry. Even the craftiest sleight of hand does not escape nature's watchful gaze. Hmm... The culprit has only acted recently. 
They will not have gotten far. The vision was the prize that I had offered, and it was my responsibility to look after it. I will be certain to get it back. Well, if you insist, I'll leave the matter to you then. I'll stay here and try to offer some explanation to all the spectators that came to see the match. If you would, please come with me. Um, but we're on an island. Where could he have possibly run to? Come with me. I can sense the winds are coming. I'll stay behind and explain the situation here. Just get the vision back. The spectators were all geared up to see an exciting match. I can't let them return disappointed. Huh? A wind current? The winds have come at an opportune moment. Let's seize this chance. Ride the winds upward. From there, we can continue our search for clues. It was stolen. Well, then why didn't you stop him? You'll see shortly. are guiding us forward. The culprit is on the opposite shore now. You can hear that too? What does it sound like? <laughs> Hubris. This way. Follow me. There may be an ambush waiting for us up ahead, but I trust that you are well prepared for such a scenario. as I expected. In which case, please stand back. That was a par. A little taste. Yeah. Uh, the hunter comes. It becomes the hunter. Uh, picked the wrong test subject. You caught up with me? How is that possible? I had even prepared a bow to ensure a quick getaway, and still you caught up to me! No boat could ever match the speed of the wind. The wind? What are you talking about? Oh, I get it. Your vision. Drat! If I only had a vision! Or, if I could activate this one, then you'd never be able to catch me! This has nothing to do with visions. You may be skilled at vanishing from a crowd, but it seems you know precious little about how to conceal yourself from nature's gaze. Additionally, your chosen escape route was flawed for reasons that are too numerous to go into, and on top of that, I could hear your boasting and proud laughter in the wind as I was pursuing you. In other words, you failed to meet any of the basic criteria for a grand heist. Namely, speed, stealth, and style. You... you... But most disappointing of all is the state of the vision in your hand. It appears that the vision doesn't respond to human desire indiscriminately. Fine! Fine! I admit it. I've had my eyes on this vision for quite some time now. I decided to register after hearing that this fighting contest was full of a bunch of lousy fighters. I fought my way to the finals and... Aha! So you were supposed to be our opponent! I'd intended to win the contest through skill alone all along, but then you showed up. After watching the semifinals, I knew that I didn't stand a chance. 
But I wasn't about to give up on the vision so easily after coming all this way. Since there was no use in trying to face you in the match, I decided to put my skills to good use while everyone's attention was on you and Beto. I was convinced I prepared thoroughly for my escape, but somehow you still managed to catch up to me. After all I went through to get it, I think not. <laughs> I know an empty threat when I hear one. Fine. But you'd better mean it. It didn't activate once I took it anyway. It's nothing but a useless shell to me. You know, according to the laws of the sea, the penalty for stealing is breaking the culprit's arms. Huh? You're not serious, are you? Not to mention that the item you stole was a prize. You didn't show up for the final match, and you damaged the reputation of the captain of the Crux fleet. It seems that it would be only fair to brand the word thief on your forehead with a hot iron. Whoa, whoa! We don't need to go that far, do we? <sighs> I never would have guessed you could be so cruel. If this is where talking gets me, then forget it! I'll risk a fight! Here's something special! I'm going in! Yeah! I'll have my revenge, eventually! No! No! Do what you want, but please! Don't brand my forehead, please! He has persevered to the bitter end. And now death looms near. Yet still the gods do not bestow their favor upon him. Put down the vision and leave. I've changed my mind. No further punishment for you. Uh huh? What's wrong? Are you asking for more punishment? It's up to you. Such willingness is commendable and fits the way of the samurai. No, no, no need for that. Thank you for releasing me. You truly are generous. Huh? Paimon doesn't get it. Were you just trying to scare him? I take no pleasure in frightening others. I was just testing all possibilities while the vision remained in his hands. When people are forced into a corner, that is when their greatest strength will appear. I thought it may be an opportunity for him to awaken the vision. But unfortunately, nothing happened. Yes. I wanted to know whether it were possible for an extinguished vision to be reawakened. From the moment he stole the vision, I decided to use him for this experiment. I've tried many other methods in the past. Though few tales tell of a masterless vision reawakening. After seeing you command multiple elements, I figured that nothing is impossible. Come, why don't you give it a try? Let's see if you can give me the answer I'm hoping for. Huh. The vision didn't seem to respond at all. I see. So you are also unable to rekindle the vision. No matter. This was expected. I suppose this vision is still mine to take for now. Yeah, what's the story behind this vision anyway? The story begins with an old friend. He was once a good friend of mine. One day he asked me about a sword art of which he had heard, the Musono Hitotachi. I told him it can only be witnessed when divine punishment is administered. It is the pinnacle of the Raiden Shogun's skill, a symbol of ultimate power. But he replied, there must be one who can withstand it. There will always be those who dare to brave the lightning's glow. Then, the vision hunt decree arrived. People's aspirations were stripped away as the Raiden Shogun began to construct her ideal of eternity. While I was fleeing from place to place, I heard that my friend had challenged the vision hunters to a duel before the throne. 
a solemn yet brutal challenge. The defeated faced divine punishment, while the victors gain a second chance. Perhaps he thought he of all people should make a stand. Coming face to face with the Musono Hitotachi was all that he truly desired, after all. When I arrived at Tenchukaku, the duel was over. I heard his sentence of divine punishment, his severed blade hitting the ground. Perhaps that was the glory he had yearned to witness. In his last moments, what expression was on his face? Before I knew it, I had stepped forward and snatched the dying vision and was running from the scene. All I knew was that I mustn't let his hope, which burned so brightly, become buried among the ice-cold statue of a god. Perhaps one day, I may come to find that all I have done is meaningless. But as a wandering samurai, I find meaning in traveling and the sprawling beauty of nature that lies along the way, while still retaining the warrior way in my heart. Kazuha! <laughs> it's just another way of saying I do as I please. All right then, it's time we returned. Do not let my feelings trouble you. But thank you. I suppose this will do. Huh? Did Beta leave already? Maybe she went back to her ship. If you're looking for the captain, she was summoned by Lady Ningguang. It seems that the Crux Clash got out of hand this time and has attracted her attention. Captain Beta was muttering something about Ningguang being a stick in the mud as she headed off to Liyue Harbor. <laughs> It's not unusual for those two to be at odds with one another. But still, Captain Beto was disappointed she didn't get to witness the crowning of the new champion. She had been looking forward to it for quite some time. The one who stole the vision was originally to be this hero's opponent in the final round. He knew he stood no chance of winning the match, thus the wicked idea of stealing the prize took hold in his mind. In which case, the Crux Clash comes to a clear-cut conclusion. Huh? So that's what happened? If that's the case, then the rules stipulate that he is disqualified. And our hero here is the champion. Paimon thought we'd win and all, but not like this. It doesn't matter. As the saying goes, honor given is honor deserved. Now, let me go prepare the champion's medal to award you. Yes, I believe so. Though Captain Beto is no longer present here, I'll be sure she receives word of it. She is a woman of her word, but the voyage to Inazuma is a treacherous one. You will be plagued by a perpetual tempest the entire trip. In fact, the relentless rain and wind are also an embodiment of the Raiden Shogun's will to close the nation. Hold on a second. You're saying she can change the weather just with the power of her mind? Let us not forget that this is one of the Seven Archons. If Liyue's Morax could form Guyun's stone forest by casting down his stone spears, then it should come as no great surprise that the Raiden Shogun is capable of summoning an eternal tempest. Suffice it to say that if you wish to journey to Inazuma, the Alcor will need some time. You will be notified once all the preparations have been made. In the meantime, I intend to embark on a journey of my own. I will travel all across the vast lands of Liyue, in the hope of finding a way to reawaken the vision. Paimon believes he'll find a way for sure. Thank you. May both our journeys prove meaningful. One final word of warning. The part of your journey that lies after the storm may well prove to be the most arduous. Add 
Astra Abyssosk. What can I do for you, traveler? Ah, yes. I've heard that you've already made arrangements with the captain of the Crux Fleet regarding your passage to Inazuma. Is that correct? Now that I think about it, it's been quite some time since I last visited those lands. Unfortunately, I don't have any current intel that would be worth sharing with you. There you are. You're the traveler that Beidou will be taking to Inazuma, right? Oh, is that right? <laughs> well, it's an honor to meet you. The fleet has nearly completed reprovisioning. Once the crews have taken a headcount, we can get underway. Captain Beidou sent me to come get you. We'll weigh anchor as soon as you're aboard. Since Beidou is the captain of her word. Of course. There are many things that the captain insists upon. I'm sure you'll see for yourself once you're on board. So you'll be heading off then? I suppose congratulations are in order. Whether the journey before you leads to the heights of the heavens, or the depths of the abyss, each step you take is another achievement. Until we meet again, Ad Astra Evisosk. Oh, it's kind of hard to say goodbye now. We practically see each other every day. <laughs> well, if that's how you feel, why not come and find me when you arrive? I'll be awaiting you on Narukami Island. So there's another Catherine at Ninazuma? See? There's no need to get all sappy now. <laughs> well, I guess it's time for you to bid farewell to Liyue Harbor. Now that I've delivered my message, I'll be heading back. The ship is currently anchored off of Guyan Stone Forest. Okay, thanks for coming all this way to let us know. Just following orders. I'll see you two aboard the Alcor. Ad Astra Abyssal. You finally made it. All these years, come rain or storm, the Crux fleet has never suffered a delay. If it were anyone else, I might have set sail already. <laughs> Don't look too serious, I'm only joking. You're just on time. The crew have just finished making final preparations. <sighs> well, now that everyone's here, we set sail for the land engulfed by storm and tempest. The nation of eternity.
ahoy there. So, you finally made it. You sure kept me waiting, Captain. And it appears we have a couple of stowaways. Or perhaps I should say, honored guests. You can blame your almighty Shogun. The tempests around Inazuma have been growing all the more fierce lately. Though the fleet was fully up to the challenge, the inclement weather still caused some delay. Now then, let me introduce everyone. This is Toma, a trade partner that I've gotten to know recently. <laughs> you don't know how long I've been waiting to see you. Toma, these two are... Oh, no need for introductions. Their reputation precedes them. It seems even the stormy seas can't keep rumors of these outlander sterling deeds at bay. <laughs> oh, it's sure nice to hear you say that. <laughs> With any luck, it'll give you a head start here. Toma's resided on Rito for quite some time now. It wouldn't be going too far to say he's the fixer around these parts. If you run into any problems here, just talk to Toma. But if he tries to pull any moves on you, I'll be sure to deal with him personally the next time I'm around. <laughs> no need to worry. I'm sure we'll get along just fine. Good. Then if it's all settled, I'll be going. I wouldn't want to be caught with my sails down here. I do have a wanted fugitive on board, after all. Oh, right. Kazuha. Until next time, traveler. Remember to give it your all. No matter what perilous storms you may encounter. Fair seas, Captain Beto. Bye bye. Now then, first things first. We need to go get you registered at the border checkpoint. Um, Paimon thought we were supposed to be keeping things on the down low. Are we just gonna walk into the government's hands? <laughs> Don't underestimate the reaches of the Sokoku Decree. You wouldn't be able to avoid inspection even if you tried. So we have to play by the rules, even if we're kind of bending them. Hello? Please state your name, identity, and the purpose of your visit. Oh, except you, Toma. You must be... new here. Uh -huh. Excuse me? Please provide the information requested, and also declare any goods you are carrying with you. Currently, only members of the International Trade Association are authorized to engage in the import and export of goods. Do you have your trader's permits? My apologies, but I'll have to ask you to... Here are their entry papers, for your kind perusal. What? Ugh, take your time, no rush or anything! <laughs> I just wanted to see what you'd say. Sorry about that. I see. Okay, your papers are all in order. Welcome to Rito. So, where do we go next? The Outlander Affairs Agency. Uh, they only check entry permits here. If you want to remain on Rito, there's a process you have to go through with them. Sheesh. So it is super strict, just like everyone says. Well, let's not forget that to everyday folk in Inazuma, People from everywhere else are referred to as outsiders. As the word suggests, outlanders aren't very welcome in Inazuma with the Sokoku Decree in force. Not even on Rito, where they've established an outsider settlement. 
<laughs> I like how you think. I've got a feeling we're going to get along very well. Now, let's head over to the Outlander Affairs Agency. Most of the current rules were put in place by the administration of Rito, the Kanjo Commission. The Kanjo Commission? Yes, one branch of the Tri Commission of Inazuma, responsible for growing and managing the nation's wealth. Um, you really haven't heard of it before? You've completed the entry procedures, yes? And now you want to apply for residency? Both of you? Yes, please. Okay, the processing fee will be two million mora. Two million? For a processing fee? Are you serious? That's right. One million per applicant, which makes two million total. Don't worry. You can trust my math. Diamond wasn't so much questioning your math as... <laughs> Ma'am, these two here are good friends of mine. I think you'll find I'm one face you recognize. Ah, Mr. Toma, it's you. By way of courtesy, allow me to reduce it to... 400,000 more a total. <laughs> Thank you ever so much, Miss Eureka. But as this is just a processing fee, I think 600 mora should cover it if I'm paying on their behalf. I'll treat you to dinner too. How does that sound? That's not how you haggle! By all means, bargain the price down, but... All right then, as you wish, Mr. Toma. I will make a record. <laughs> Much obliged. Seriously wrong with people's sense of finance around here! <laughs> it's not as mind-boggling as you think. A processing fee is just a figure of speech. The way some here at the agency see it, the fees are easy money. So it becomes a question of how much they can make. So when the day comes that some poor merchant from overseas with more money than cents gets stuck here and needs to apply for residency... Exactly. It's at times like this that having a local friend really comes in handy. Yes, but when you're an outlander in Inazuma, far from home in this close nation era, there's very little that can be done about it. The most that overseas merchants can do to look after themselves is stick together. That's how the International Trade Association came about. So it's a trade association built by and for outlanders? Yep. And as well as advancing commercial interests, the association provides help, support, and structure for outlanders trying to survive on retail. Essentially, it's an association devoted to both commercial excellence and survival skills. <sighs> Sounds like just staying alive is an achievement when you're an outlander in Inazuma. I see. So this is the real purpose of your trip. Yes, given that you are outlanders, it's certainly a lofty aspiration. After all, the Raiden Shogun is the most exalted and revered one in all of Inazuma. She is a deity who reigns on high, while all other life gazes up in awe. Huh. I was going to say nothing is set in stone when it comes to who you will encounter in this world. Who's to say you won't happen to run into the Raiden Shogun one day after lunch? Okay, I'll give it to you straight. I know of a way to introduce you to the Raiden Shogun. Really? Wow! The Rito Fixer is better connected than we thought! <laughs> I mean, it will take all the resources I have at my disposal, but it can be done. However, before we get there... Connections come at a high price, you understand? 
<laughs> no, no. In this instance, when I say price, I'm not talking about Mora. In fact, there's no real cost as such. It's just that if this is something you really want, you'll have to agree to help other people solve some of their problems first. I like to do things in a way that keeps everybody happy. It's my own personal rule for dealing with situations like this. Sounds very reasonable to Kaima. You're the man in the middle, so you have to trade favors to keep everyone indebted to you. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling you're making me out to be some sort of crook? Uh, never mind. Here's the situation. As I touched upon earlier, the members of the International Trade Association are constantly struggling to survive. Recently, things seem to have gotten more difficult than ever for them, so just go and check things out. See if there's any way you can help. The head of the association is called Carisio, and he's a good friend of mine. Go talk to him. I'll wait for you here. Carisio will reach his wit's end if things carry on like they are. Go see what you can do for him. <laughs> 